You're known as a systems thinker in martial arts, but you also, I think, are willing to think outside the rules of the game, outside of the system. When you're thinking about strategies of how to, you know, solve the problem, particular problem of an opponent, whether that's jiu-jitsu or in mixed martial arts, what's your process for doing that, for figuring out that puzzle? I would say, I don't know if I have a specific like A to B to C process for that sort of thing. Um, I try to do my best to uh, appreciate that. I think a lot of the thinking um, or maybe not all the thinking, but a lot of great thinking on conflict, on battle, on war, on martial arts has been done already. Um, Not that we don't have to do any sort of uh, background investigation or reassessing of these ideas or axioms that have come down through things like the book of five rings or the art of war. Or, you know, like von Klausowitz, even anything like that, really. But is uh, it, we're trying to understand the the lessons of the past that I think oftentimes we we don't take with us um, problem solving. We pay lip service and like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a, a victorious fighter, uh, the great fighter, uh, you know, he knows victory is there. Then he, then, he, then he seeks battle. Everyone else is looking for victory in battle. Yeah, moving on. And that's why I'm going to double jab and throw my left hand. And uh, I think a lot of times our actions don't reflect our stated belief structure. And I think that oftentimes you can tell what I believe really or what my fundamental operating system is based on my actions, whether I'm aware. I have an operating system internally, whether I'm aware of it or not, or certainly whether I'm fully aware of it. So I guess uh, when it comes to strategy, I I try to think about how things interact. You mentioned systems thinking, and and I try to do my best to understand how systems exist. But I think that systems have a fundamental strength and a fundamental weakness. They work how they work, and that's great, um, but they're readable. So if you are aware, if I am operating on a system uh, of which you're you're not really read into, then I, I think oftentimes I can seem like shockingly effective, particularly if my system preys on certain weaknesses uh, that that maybe you are uh, you're given to. But what happens when you've read the same books that I have? I, I think that a lot of times that makes me deeply predictable. I think about systems in jujitsu, you know, and uh, a lot of times people think that they're doing jujitsu when in reality they are doing an expression of it. Let's say I'll use there's the Marcelo Garcia system. There is the uh, Henzo Gracie current Henzo Gracie system. There's the old Gracie Baja one. There is a uh, you know, the Gracie Academy, classic Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. There's the art of Jiu-Jitsu, um, you know, kind of Atos approach. And, you know, there's some crossover between a lot of these. But uh, oftentimes I think, um, you know, when it comes to understanding how I'm making decisions and how my opponent is making decisions, I have to appreciate whether or not I'm an end user of something. And I'll use my, my phone as an example. Um, I was thinking of this the other day. And as an end user of my phone, I can't, I have no idea what it does. You know, like Edward Snowden comes up and goes, hey, guys, you realize your phones are listening to you. I'm like, really? What? Yeah. All right, I believe you. And then, of course, that that comes out. But uh, to what extent? I have no idea. Um, what is my phone capable of? I have no idea. I can mess with the font, though. I really like blue screens, not purple screens. So, like, as an end user, I can change some of the bells and whistles that have nothing to do with the underlying source code of it all or how it functions. The same way in my car, I'm an end user of my car. If I do this with the uh, steering wheel, it goes. If I push on the gas, it goes. Um, if I, yeah, I know how to fix it when it's out of gas. I know how to fix it when it's out of oil. And I, and I know how to fix it, you know, when, uh, when a flat tire comes. But short of that, or actually beyond that, I have nothing. So, I think that oftentimes... Um, you know, I've been around in jiu-jitsu long enough to encounter like a new wave of, of like good grapplers. Mm-hmm. And it's very, very interesting sometimes how they're running systems they don't realize they're running. Like I'm like, oh yeah, I, I trained at Marcelo Garcia's Academy for a long time, you know, and a big fan of Marcelo's was a student there. Uh, encountered a lot of the the Otto style jiu-jitsu a number of years ago. Uh, been, you know, a very, very, you know, deep into foot locking and leg attacks and whatnot for a long, long time. I understand your system better than you do, or I may. And let's say you understand my system better than I do. That would be a huge issue. That was something that I encountered a long time ago trying to come up in jiu-jitsu where I was trying to utilize systems that were created by, let's say, Hoffa Mendez or someone else. And I'm basically trying to do what you're doing. I'm just not doing as good of a version of it. So not only am I not doing it well, but I'm entirely predictable. And I think that that can be a big issue. So to come back, I think of systems a lot of times now in terms of, you know, particularly like end user type of systems, like Mm -hmm. uh, an iPhone is a really, really fast way for me to be able to do all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. If you were to take it from me, I, I couldn't recreate any of that. 
So you want to be more the NSA and less the end user. Exactly, exactly. That way, that way I'm listening to you. You want to be to the you. NSA of combat. That's right. We're watching you pee. But basically, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I guess what I would, what I would come back and say is, uh, if you understand how things interact on a fundamental level and what type of games exist and what type of interactions exist, then you can transcend a lot of the, uh, the systems. You, it's almost like a cook versus if I can make certain things in the kitchen, I can, but I am not a chef. You could give me a bunch of ingredients and I could probably cook not well, but a couple of different things. But a, a master chef, you know, would be aware of the implications of all of the things that they're doing, you know, extra time in the oven, less time in the oven, putting this, you know, flavoring or spice in, you know, what you're doing with various things. And also they could make, they could turn all of these ingredients into Chinese food. Or they could turn all these ingredients into Italian food and they could turn all these Italian food ingredients into chicken Parmesan or it could turn into lasagna, but they're not limited to a specific thing because they have knowledge of how food interacts, how, how what it does to create taste, what it does to create texture. So to come back, let's take rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors is built on the idea of a couple different things. Actually, I'll tell you what, can I, may I, may I ask you a question? Yeah. What's your favorite dinosaur? On the same, on three, we'll go one, two, three. T Rex. T Rex. Oh, me too. No, we're, man, this is, we're going to be best friends. So uh, it's okay. Uh, if So, what's the first question when you say, hey, let's play rock, paper, scissors? It's like, hey, is it rock, paper, scissors or rock, paper, scissors, shoot? And you're like, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. And you're like, okay. Because if we go rock, paper, scissors, shoot, and I'm like, oh, man, I, I got lucky and I won. Imagine I won 100 times in a row. Yeah. It'd, I'd be luck. It'd be luck. If, if I was honestly doing that. But now let's say, for instance, I go on rock, paper, scissors, and you go on shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Mm -hmm. Here comes the rock, right? Okay. If you lose, whose fault is it? It's yours. This is built on a parody thing where the, the, we, I don't get to pick second. If I get to pick second, it's like being able to investigate your background before going to meet you. And then I'm like, oh, hi. Oh, I too love the New Jersey, you know, the New Jersey Nets, which is a statement that no one in their right mind would ever make when I was growing up. So anyway, you'd have to have personal <laughs> knowledge of somebody. So anyway, to come back, let's, you're, a, if, if you understand how games are structured, you can start to realize that there's huge gaps and huge holes in a lot of the the thinking behind all of it. 